scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that our faith adventure will capture several kinds of experiences. Jesus himself spoke about the possibility of having tribulations, having persecutions, having negative and unfavorable experiences. In John chapter 16, particularly verse 33, Jesus himself was speaking and he said, in this world, not outside of this world, he says, these things I have spoken to you that ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but he says, be of good cheer. He leaves you with an information that can give you peace, even in the midst of storms. Most believers do not understand the entire span of the faith journey of the believer. I understand the joy of salvation. I understand the joy that comes when you have results, when things work well in your life. But most believers have not been taught what to do when seasons change and when and if they are negative. So when believers are confronted with seasons that are unfavorable, does not matter what form it appears, they become broken, they become discouraged, some become utterly confused as to what to do. And it is at such times that Satan comes in because his assignment is to attempt to let you see through your experiences that God is unfaithful. So he will not meet you at every time. He will wait for these moments and these seasons. Are we learning now? It is a very dangerous thing for a believer to pass through unfavorable seasons uninformed. Because the casualty that can come out of that season can discourage other believers. And the victory that comes out of that season can also strengthen that belief. So the, the season, both God and Satan is interested in the season. Why am I preaching this? Because I believe that there are people here sincerely for God to have put this message in my spirit and insist that I teach it. It is because it is possible that there are people here and those following online from across the globe who are weary, fatigued spiritually and are at a point right now where we are crying for answers. Otherwise, many may give up and God is sending this word even at this conference to give you an explanation and to help you interpret the writings on the wall. Apostle, what is happening in my life? It looks like everything has just vanished that is capable of giving me joy. My peace, my health, my strength, my finances, my marriage, my children. We are people of faith, but there is something about seasons that we need to understand. Is someone learning? Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. May I request also that we'll read it together? It's projected. Ready? One to read. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. One more time. If thou, just, just verse 10. If thou faint, The Bible acknowledges that there is a day 
called the day of adversity. What a caption for a day. Are we together now? The Bible says that there is a possibility and that every believer, for as long as you sojourn long enough in this space called the earth, you will collide with a day in your experience called the day of adversity. He tells you what you need is not to pray the day away necessarily. What you need is to build momentum for that day. Because the factor that will bail you out on that day is not avoiding the day. is having strength. So this is, this is an issue of strength. Not just running away from the day. That if you faint in the day of battle, he says it is because your strength is small. Not because of the day. Something about the, the insufficiency of your strength can make that day scar you and destroy you even for the rest of your life. Adversity speaks of misfortune. Adversity speaks of hardship. Adversity speaks of challenges, mishap. Adversity speaks of continual difficulty. The Bible leaves us very in a very very vocal expression the bible tells us that for as long as you live long enough in the earth whether you like it or not that a seasons will come in your life when you will experience different levels of discomfort for different reasons and the bible lets us know that in the journey of life and destiny in this faith adventure strength is necessary not just knowledge knowledge is important but a time will come when what you need is strength are we together in proverbs in in ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 apostle paul was teaching the church in ephesus and he said that he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Why would Paul be talking to the church, those who are already saved, about the need for strength? To be strengthened in your inner man. Because there is a limitation in all men. Are we together? And that limitation was clearly... It was, it was clearly expressed in the Bible in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Please turn with me quickly to Isaiah 40. For the sake of time, I will just take 29 and 30. In fact, let's, let's start from 28. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. Now, he's giving you an information about God because he's about to contrast it with something that man does not have. That this God does not have the ability to faint. Number two, that God is not weary. Two things he's telling you is not found in God. God does not faint and God is not weary. The Bible says... There is no searching of his understanding. Now, verse 29. He says he giveth power to the faint. He doesn't tell us who that person is. But whoever is that person who is in that state, he's already giving you hope that there is a bailout system. That every time you faint, he gives power. Not counsel, not advice. When you faint, it is not knowledge you need necessarily. You need strength. He giveth power to the faint. And to him that have no might, he increased 30. Even the youth shall faint. This is a very serious statement. Because the glory of the young people is in their strength. And he's telling you, for as long as you sojourn in this life, the wear and tear of living will catch up with you regardless the advantage of age. That even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall then he leaves you with a secret that they that wait upon the lord paraku 
Something happens to their strength. He uses a strange expression, renew. That means it was once there, but something happened. He does not say he gives you strength. That he renews your strength. And he does it in a way that you can mount up with wings as the eagles. That when you master the technology of renewal, you can run. And when men think you should be weary, they find out mysteriously you never get weary. And when you should walk, you would not faint. He's saying under normal circumstances, it's impossible to walk so fast, so journeying in life without being weary and without fainting. But he introduces a technology that you can tap into a spiritual technology that makes you behave like God in experience. That when others are weary and when they are fainting, you are standing by a strength and an intelligence. Weariness talks of exhaustion. Weariness talks of discouragement. Believe me when I tell you all it takes is for you to live long enough on this earth. And you will know that weariness is a cross that all mortal men must carry. When Jesus became a man, he tasted of weariness and the Bible does not hide it. As God, there was no mention of weariness. But the moment he became a man, your Bible tells you one day he was hungry. And he went to the tree. He did not advise the tree. Yet he is God that is love. He caused that tree. Why? Hunger. Hunger was the reason behind that cause. Not a demonic activity. He's standing before a tree that lured him. And he came there and finding no fruit. Where did he keep his mercy? Where did he keep his love? And you see, the Bible does not hide these experiences. Because he wants you to know God wholly. There is a dimension of God that if the Bible hides, you will not know God accurately. Then the Bible records his frustration. He looks at his disciples and says, will you also leave? And they say, to whom shall we go? And he finds comfort from that statement. Then he gets to a point, follow carefully. Jesus gets to a point where carrying the cross and the burden of the, the enormity of the work that was he, on him. The Bible says Jesus himself turned to the father and was negotiating. He was not sleepy. He was not drunk with his intelligence. He said, Father, I am God, but I'm not ashamed to negotiate. Do you know what pain can do? Pain can get you to a point where your reputation does not matter again. You are so conscious of solutions, even if it would destroy you. Jesus, I hope we're learning tonight. Hmm. Father, if it be thy will, as though they did not discuss it. This was something that was finished already in heaven. He was just here to execute it. And now he's renegotiating everything. Take this cup from off me. I'm tired. I'm not the one who sinned. And he remembered. said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You would think that would be the end of the frustration. I'm explaining weariness using Jesus as the reference. Jesus is hanging on the tree and you would think he would be singing praise and worship. At least even when they were killing Stephen the Messiah, Stephen did not complain, but Jesus was there. And he was not concerned about what men said, but when he looked up and saw that the father turned his face, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. Why will you turn your face against me? I understand men, but you... Jesus. If we do not understand the reality of exhaustion and weariness, it can so affect our faith. Because you see, there is a dimension of faith that is being taught in the body of Christ that looks very spiritual but is incorrect. And it has not given people a chance to understand God wholly. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. There is a dimension of, there are seasons that are uncomfortable. 
but you see there are requirements for greatness and if you use the guise of faith to just erode those seasons people will never know god completely and there will never be people of stature and balance there is a requisite level of pain there is a requisite level you must taste of certain seasons to qualify you to carry certain graces now this is a language that our generation does not want to hear all using the guise of faith let me apologize in advance because we're going to rush so there are many people who try to wave seasons away jesus himself when it had to do with ranking and increase they asked him a question we want to sit at your left and right he didn't say the seat was not vacant he said there is a condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there are people today who want uncommon anointings they want uncommon influence. They want to stand in the shoes and the offices of people. And most people want to get it by claiming. Not everything is a gift. There are things that are rewards. The Bible says to him that endures, he will be given a crown and a white stone. Endurance. There is a lot of admiration of people who God is doing mighty things with. And, and people just make it look as though it was just something that they were lucky, just a gift. I, believe me, if you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, you will find strength. Hmm. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed. Ah. Who seen that this man was born blind? It was a question they asked Jesus. Was it him or was it his father? Listen to the reply of Jesus. Neither. But this has happened that the glory of God. Is it in your Bible? Oh my goodness. Is that how far God is willing to go for his glory to be revealed? That a man is born blind and Jesus, who is the manifestation of the glory of the Father, is telling you that God so desires for his glory to be revealed that he can create all kinds of scenarios provided it will provide glory. God does not regret it. Your name is to be hallowed. Psalm 27 from verse 13 and 14. Please let's rush. I really believe with all my heart that this message is giving someone perspective. It's opening you up to something. For some of you, it is possible that you are in these seasons right now. And you want to know, is it an attack? Is it a test? What is give a definition to this season? And then help me know if I should just stay and endure. Should I fight it? Should I receive it? Should I learn from it? I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. And he shall strengthen your heart. But here is your own condition. Wait. When Pastor Nat came up and began to sing that song about waiting, I said, this man. Wait on the Lord and you will find strength. Let me give you three biblical reasons for weariness. Now that we have established that weariness is something that spirituality does not automatically take away. Provided you wear a mortal body, it is a tendency that will eventually catch up with you. As we learn from the life of Jesus, who is our reference and our standard. If Jesus were, were weary as a child, we would give him that excuse. But Jesus was weary at the height of everything in his life. What is the first cause of weariness? I wrote down here, disappointed expectations. Please write it down. Disappointed expectations. Proverbs 13 and verse 12. The first reason 
why believers and even spiritual people can become weary in this faith adventure my bible says hope deferred can make the heart sick if it was just the body that was sick you can go to the hospital to treat it but now he's telling you that this sickness will go beyond your body that hope deferred can make the heart sick but when the desire cometh, it is the tree of life disappointed expectations we all desire results in our lives we all desire results that bring glory to the name of the lord and become consolations to our christian experience in fact psychologists tell us that one of the keys to fulfillment is progress a sense of progress to the degree to which we make constructive advance with our lives we find fulfillment is that true disappointed expectations number two the second reason why believers can be wary is attacks persecutions and tribulation james chapter one i'll read from verse one to four attacks persecution tribulation james chapter one from verse one to four here's what it says james is servant and all of that he greets you and then let's start from verse 2 he said my brethren who is he talking to he's talking to people who are of the fold that you count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations verse 3 knowing this there is an information he wants you to know that can grant you the ability to even count it all joy he says that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4. He says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. Now, that word entire is interesting. That for you to be whole, there is a requisite, there is an administration of tribulation and adversity that works together to make you entire. That means without that in the equation of your faith adventure, you are incomplete. There is something about your life and your knowledge of God that is not yet complete. Wanting nothing. 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's read from verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Shabakus Beloved. Again, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, he says, as though some strange thing happened to you. He's saying you are people of faith, but factor this in your faith adventure. He says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye might be glad also with exceeding joy. We're reading to 16. He says, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. He says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. 16. It says, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Very strange scripture, yet it is in the Bible. Attacks, persecutions, tribulations. Number three, very quickly. What is the third reason why people experience weariness, sorrow? sorrow as simple as that sorrow let me define for you what sorrow is sorrow is a feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses disappointments misfortune etc a feeling of deep distress caused by losses caused by disappointments caused by misfortune it could lead to depression it could lead to sadness I'm sure that Apostle Goodhart will concur to this alongside the servants of God here represented. I believe that every man of God would have an average of 
one situation requiring his help at least every day a bereavement somewhere something you can wake up to several text messages apostle something just happened apostle this one happened my son just died i lost a, a, a very touching story from a family a few weeks ago a woman who went to give birth with joy and gave birth and died had twins and died there and they prayed and prayed from the house and they were ministers of the gospel now how do you explain that these are the kinds of moments that unbelievers love because they cash in the devil will ride through it and say is this how god rewards those who serve him twins lovely uh, babies and now the woman died very it was a painful experience for the family there is no day that i do not have the privilege and the opportunity of sharing the pain and attempting to give perspective to negative issues around the lives of sincere people are we learning sorrow there are issues in the lives of people that you stand and even as a man of God, you stretch your intelligence, you open from Genesis to Revelation and you honestly cannot find an answer. The only thing you may be tempted to say is give thanks. And that give thanks, you don't say it immediately. You just sing a song and pray in tongues and hope that the Holy Ghost who is the comforter would minister to them and then you can come back later because the situations defy explanation. Are we together when people have to pay the price because of their integrity or their love for God when people lose loved ones I know people who died of diseases and they were quoting scripture till their last breath how do you explain that kind of occurrence and yet whilst they were sick on the sick bed they had propositions from tradition and all kinds of things leave that church thing and come let's help you we know what is wrong with you and they said for my integrity i will stand and yet they died from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same you see as i teach you will be understanding this song it's easy to sing in the morning of your destiny when the sun is just rising you are naive about so many things you've not gone through anything your stamina is when you sing in the evening too. If the evening still catches you singing, you are mature. It takes, it takes skill to sing in the morning, but it takes strength to sing in the evening. I'm raising that song for you for a reason. From the rising of the sun, with your naivety and ignorance, and ignorance can be an advantage. You are light enough to shout. But by the time it is the evening season of your life, you are in a straight betwixt whether to sing that he is faithful or not. If you still call him faithful, it took more than vocal prowess. You are strong. Haven't lost family members. Haven't lost your job. Haven't lost several things. Spend your life explaining God's faithfulness and yet your results does not seem to catch. And yet you still join those who are rejoicing to sing. Now you understand what the Spirit of God gave us through Pastor Nat's song. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Job was one man whose life remains a lesson for us. A man who lost everything in one day. And then the Bible tells us on top of that, his health was affected. The wealthiest man became a lesson for many people. I'm sure others will say, "What? however you got that money, God is judging you now. I'm sure there will be a prophet who will prophesy and say, I saw this thing happening. And yet he kept quiet. Job got to a point where he was frustrated. And he said, though he slay me. Listen to me, you don't sing in the evening with skill. It takes strength. Nevertheless, nevertheless, your name be lifted. I am burying my loved one, but I still stand upon my integrity. 
that you are the giver of life and when men ask you and say do you still keep your conviction in the midst of your pain like job you can tell them god is greater that all the days of my appointed time i will wait read your bible and see what the bible calls faith women who received their dead to laugh and others who died without receiving the promise he gathered all and called it faith several people entered this year with all kinds of pains and disappointment there are pastors bleeding there are business people bleeding i understand where we just rejoice and say don't worry but there are people asking questions when they go back home god are you still there and for many if they do not encounter the truth from conferences like this the devil will cash in upon their ignorance and tell them it means something is wrong with you but i bring back that statement who sinned that this man was born blind it is not always about sin not him nor his father but that the glory of god be revealed how can god allow a man go through affliction for glory ask jesus what is the relationship between the cross and the crown on his head? Are you blessed now? That you go through seasons and there is like a fetcher. There is something about God you carry out of that season. That when you come out of it, it gives you the ranking in the spirit. That although you are a miracle worker, you can stand in a place where there is bereavement and you still have a sermon. There are people who do not have any salmon when they meet those who are downcast. The salmon is only for those who are looking for. There are times you will be forced to preach a salmon to people who are crying. Do you have that salmon? You don't study it from your Bible. You fetch it from your own pain. Sorrow. A deep feeling of pain most times when people die people reach me so that we can try and pray for them and see if they come back to life and honestly you cannot imagine how painful it can be sometimes that you sincerely love people and they they and the people have faith you can't say they don't have faith what else is faith they woke up in the morning and rang your phone 30 times is that not faith and said i know if you speak a word my dead husband or father will come back to life people lost their businesses and some of them will say apostle i sowed seeds i built churches can i tell you you're a minister of the gospel here <clears throat> don't be embarrassed if you don't have all the answers you are not god don't feel ashamed if you don't have all the answers it's not an indictment on your knowledge of god there are times that silence is the answer. There are times joy is the answer. There are times your song, given your tears, can be the answer. Church is quiet. Let's try that song again. From the rising of the sun To the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed keys to revival from weariness that a man can be revived so that he can now be a conduit that brings comfort succor revival the seasons that you are now passing in for some of you that season will become your trophy tomorrow do not run away from scars. What is a token of shame today may be your symbol of honor tomorrow. 
When you get to heaven, one of the ways you know that this is Jesus is by looking at the hands of everybody. Whoever does not have a scar on his hand is not Jesus. He's not the only one who has a crown. Elders have crowns. But check the one who has a scar. There are times when we come and God sends us to you. We are not looking for your sermon. Show me your scar. That is the key to your honor. Let no man trouble me, he said. For I bear in my body. I pass through that season. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an illegal immigrant, if I would use that expression. Hmm. <laughs> Number one. The first key that is able to revive you from these seasons of weariness and these supposed inexplanable, inexplanable seasons. Number one, a revelation of the love of God. The first key that sponsors strength and stamina and revival to the weary is a revelation of the love of God. Three scriptures very quickly. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. The Bible clearly tells us, verse 1, we'll just keep it there, that we are the sons of God and that God showed the extent of his love by making us sons. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, it's been an anthem in my life, a very powerful scripture, that I have loved you, Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old to me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with my loving kindness have I drawn you. The consciousness of the love of God is a strengthener. When you know that God loves you and that his jealousy is ever before you, it can grant you strength even in the midst of these seasons. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 Romans 8 28 it says all things work together for the good of them that love God this is a love affair and to them who are the called according to his purposes all things doesn't matter what it is the Bible says it sustains the ability to work together so the first key to revival from weariness is a revelation of the love of God. Key number two. I call it the comfort of scripture. The comfort of scripture. What betides a man who is far from scripture during these seasons? Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, it says they were written for our learning, that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Scripture is not just for information. Scripture is also for comfort. You know how you get comfort from scripture? When you see what happened before to the saints. And you see how God brought them out. It can minister comfort to you. The Bible says that was why it was written. It's not always about information. It's also so that you can draw strength. That when you go through seasons that you cannot explain, you remember Jesus, you remember Joseph, you remember the nation of Israel, you remember all of these people and you can find strength, strength for that journey. Psalm 119 and verse 28, Psalm 119 and verse 28, Psalm 119. And verse 28 it says my soul melted for heaviness strengthen thou me according to your word my soul melted for heaviness but strengthen thou me according to your word the word of God is powerful it is able to give you strength number three what is the key to revival from weariness and from these unfavorable seasons, strategic prayers, strategic prayers, strategic prayers. 
Psalm 34 from verse 4 to 7, very popular scripture. Psalm 34 from verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. God does not just deliver men from trouble, he delivers them from fears too. Next verse. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6. It says, The poor man cried, and the Lord heard them, and saved him out of all his troubles. The last verse 7. It says, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and he delivered them. Prayer is powerful. Psalm 61 from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 61 from verse 1 to 4. Hear my cry, O God, he says. Attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. He says, from the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The last verse. It says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in thy covet, the covet of thy wings. This is the psalmist praying. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4 from verse 6 and 7. Please write it down. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he says let your requests be made known unto god next verse and the peace of god which surpasseth all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through jesus christ it is in the place of prayer that you are able to exchange your pain your confusion for the peace of god and the bible says that peace surpasses all understanding it is able to build a garrison around your mind and around your heart are we learning now that's key number three strategic prayer that every time you find yourself in seasons in your faith adventure seasons that are unfavorable you engage strategic prayers number four are you ready the fourth key is joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. We'll look at three scriptures very quickly. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Popular scripture. The B part says, For the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Not the joy from your results. The joy of the Lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength second corinthians chapter 12 second corinthians chapter 12 from verse 9 9 and 10 this was apostle paul he said unto me this was his discourse with god when he was afflicted buffeted thrice he said my grace is sufficient for thee he said, for my strength is made perfect or manifest in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, mysteriously, I am strong. Are we together? The joy that comes Philippians 4 and verse 4 Philippians 4 and verse 4 Philippians 4 and verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Not just always, always. Another word is all seasons. Again, I repeat, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. How in the world do you rejoice in the face of a threatening medical result? How do you rejoice in the face of bills before you? 
how do you rejoice in the face of obvious negative and uncomfortable situations the bible says to rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice popular scripture habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 we're about to pray habakkuk chapter 3 beginning from verse 17 it says although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls i like the next word yet don't worry don't worry don't rush it yet all of those things yet this would be my response i will rejoice in the lord I will joy in the God of my salvation. 19. He says, The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. That in spite of everything that has happened, my response, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Your name is to be hallowed. Ah, your name is to be hallowed. Ah, Number five, the fifth key to revival in the midst of weariness that provides restoration for your soul and even strength for the journey is called impartation of strength. God is able to impart strength to the believer. In addition to your consciousness of his love, the comfort of scripture, strategic prayers, your joy, number five is impartation of strength. The strength of God can come upon an individual as an impartation and provide the stamina for continuity. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Son of man, he said, Stand upon your feet and let me speak to you. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. And the man did not have any strength. And verse 2 says, And the spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. The spirit, when he asked me to stand, I didn't have the strength to stand but the spirit, something from him. This is what is happening to someone now because this is February and for some people, you already seem to have the weariness of December and the spirit entered into him and set me upon my feet. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul was speaking over the church in Philippi and he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I can do all things through that anointing, that spiritual agency that grants me unusual strength, that when people are weary, people are downcast, I can carry a godlike stamina and that it is sponsored by the infusion of strength from heaven. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, Again, my brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amplified says, draw your strength from your union with him. Draw your strength. Take advantage of the fact that you are one with him and draw your strength. Be empowered through your union with him. Don't waste the fact that you are one with him. That when you go through these seasons, the awareness that you have an advantage by reason of being grafted into Christ, take advantage of it and draw strength. 
draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might can i tell you this please look up when you pass through seasons seasons that seem to be uncomfortable seasons that test and try your faith when you endure to the end let me tell you two things that happen to you number one there is always an increase and multiplication of the grace of god that is invested upon your life it will be clear to all and sundry that this one is a reed i have taken out of fire number two authority and grace is given to you to bring anybody who gets to that situation to this is this is one of the classic this is one of the blessings of enduring seasons in the spirit that if a woman for instance has been trusting god for the fruit of the womb done everything she knows to do and nothing seems to happen she's gone through her journey of pain let me tell you the day that woman gives birth it's not just a child she has that child also came with an anointing. Any woman she prays for, she can draw from the archive of her pain. It is true. That's the reason why you find out that God often, he, he, he would often empower people along the areas of their pain, the areas that he creates a ministry. Are we together? Because you see, pain and unfavorable seasons like this can plant in you compassion. And compassion is how the anointing is drawn forth from within you. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He was in every way like us, tempted, yet without sin. You see that? Compassion. Jesus had compassion for us to the point that even when he went to heaven, he still found a ministry for himself, interceding for the saints. Exalted, defeated Satan, hell, death, and the grave, and yet he sat at the right hand of the Father. He was so touched by his experience being a man that he continues to intercede for us. You know what it means to intercede? To intercede means... To be that bridge to pray and say father i know what it means to be a man of god in nigeria i know what it means to be a man of god on earth let's look at that scripture again and then we'll pray first corinthians one second corinthians one from verse three and four second corinthians one Verse 3 and 4. Now it will make sense to you. And then we'll pray. 2 Corinthians 1 from verse 3 and 4. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. It says, Who comforted us in our tribulation? That we might be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Any trouble is a qualification you get. Like an accreditation. That situations and seasons can put a badge upon you. And anyone who is troubled and dismayed, God pushes you and says, go there. You are the only one who can understand the situation of this family. Because of something you have gone through. Can I tell you, in your scar is your glory. Don't run away from it. That you cried trusting God for a miracle. You came to Abuja with no sponsor, nobody, and some of you are passing through unfavorable seasons. That season is driving you to pray in tongues every day. After all, there's no job. And God has seen that there is an advantage in that season. I assure you, he won't be in a hurry to bring a job. He has found out that that situation is birthing something out of you for our light afflictions he says which worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory because there are people who are about to enter new seasons in their lives 
you've been going through seasons that you cannot explain lord give me a definition of what is happening to me and the lord put this conference together to bring answers to you and he's telling you rejoice not over your tragedy rather rejoice in the lord because he's doing something in your life and can i tell you when god is done with you like the rising of the sun you will emerge with power and grace and stamina and wisdom you will stand with uncanny mastery as you administer the anointing of the spirit because you are not just one who read your bible you went through a school in the spirit woe betides any nation whose king is a child you know what it means to be a child there is a requisite level of innocence you must give up if you want to sit in the place of authority hmm. by innocence i mean naivety father i want you to use me mightily i want to be a great man of god father i want to be a kingdom billionaire you say and he's watching you vetting the sincerity mixed with childishness that is rubbing off in prayer and he says are you ready to drink of my cup and usually you will say yes and in your mind you believe that everything is all right he says hold my hand and let's go for the journey and before you go he says hold on eat first because you have no idea where you are going to do you know what it means to eat to eat means take advantage of every privilege you have now because when you start that journey for 40 days you might not see anybody again so some of you here are about to start that season and god is saying eat free prayer every time you have any trouble you just call and someone picks your phone he said take advantage of that season because the season you are about to enter i will prohibit you from calling anyone you will walk your faith till it works by itself eat for the journey is far and you've eaten and he's tapping you and saying eat again whoever knew that the pandemic will bring the world to this kind of state that it literally resets the life and the destinies of other people there are people today who have not even gained their footing suicide everywhere but there are those who are saying lord there is something i know about you hmm. that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me i will fear no evil for your rod and your staff they comfort me notice his voice was not mentioned there your rod and your staff how does a rod and staff create comfort but he says they comfort me every great man you know if they are to be sincere with you if they want to really teach you the secret to their exploits you will cry at the end of the story because they will not tell you what you want to hear they will tell you seasons of pain they will tell you about seasons when i have the privilege and the honor of sitting with great people i sit quietly like a sponge i'm not interested in all the glamour tell me the stories if he's a minister of the gospel, I'll tell him, I don't want to hear about signs and wonders. Let me, let me just know. Unfortunately, our world today does not have any regard for scars. No. You see, the palace can so decorate you, it will look like you don't have a scar. Always remind those in the palace that this robe of royalty came because there is a scar. And there are times you must be honest to show them the scar. There is a reason why the sky is on the hand of jesus he does not wear gloves even though he's royalty he leaves the sky for you to see and to remind you that if you are going to follow in his steps it is not just about prayer and impartation alone there are wells you must dig dear man of god there are wells you must dig not everything will just come by praying for me there are times you will cry you will have to make that history by yourself my assignment tonight is to bring you comfort by the spirit and then to pray that the staying power because some of you are almost the season is almost coming to an end don't give up one day to the end of the season you can abort the season pastor nat came up here and sang by the spirit waiting waiting 
waiting is painful waiting is not a parable it means wait and the human spirit interprets waiting as irresponsibility because we are people of action why do i sit down doing nothing oh god with all this confusion in my life and he says it is there that wait upon the lord are we together please do not miss the sessions tomorrow because you would not get an incomplete teaching this way there is something i will connect to what i'm teaching you that will open your eyes and show you something about god that the more we pass through these seasons there is something about god there is a way you see god that is different when you are in fire there is no other way of seeing god that way until you are in fire are we together Today, we are gathered here celebrating what God is doing in the life of a man of God and his dear wife. Among many other factors, because of a testament of surviving and standing strong through seasons, singing in the night, singing with tears. And can I tell you, don't just come to receive information alone. Come trusting that god will interpret for you the writings on the wall how do i move from this place to the place of destiny when they were introducing pastor nat i listened carefully to what the man of god said he said it's one person who is teaching the nations how to worship and i sat quietly and i listened and i said we love those kinds of things but can you pay that price believe me there is a price there are some things you cannot pray away. You will have to pass through it. If you are Jesus and you intend to sit on the throne, get ready for the cross. Not only will you be hung there, you will carry it. You will first carry it before you die on it. I don't mean to scare you, but the Holy Ghost granted me the release to teach this. There are messages that will not make sense now, but seasons will come when you will need them no matter how bright a light i give you if it is in the day you don't need it just keep that light because when you get to the night you will need that light for advancement the most important component in your car if it's in the night is your headlamp not the color of the car not even the type of the car we can rejoice at the glamour of the car in the day but once we get to the night time be sure that while we are rejoicing in the day your headlamp is all right because he made two great lights. There is a light you will need in the night. The darkness that is looming across the earth requires a high level spiritual understanding. Two categories of people here. Number one, those who are already in this season. Praying and saying, Apostle, I have been praying and asking God to give a definition to what is happening to me. I lost a loved one, I lost money, something seems to not just add up with my life and destiny, my ministry, my business. What, what is the meaning of that? And God is bringing perspective. May I remind you again, who sinned that this man was born blind? It is not always a sin issue. Jesus said, neither, not his father, not him, but that in that entire experience, there is glory that shall be birthed through this hear me man of god you are going through what you are going through because of a mantle that is waiting for you kingdom billionaire forget about all the dreams you've been having with you having money if you really want that dream to become a reality more than just saying i receive by faith i tell you there are seasons you will step into a season where god will ask you to empty your account on top of the cry you have cried after crying for six hours, you think he will send a destiny helper. He will ask you, empty what is left first. And you sit down there not knowing whether you are a Christian or not again. And he tells you, that is the qualification for being my treasurer. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun your name is to be hallowed 
for those people who are going through those seasons I believe that the Lord brought me here tonight as a prophetic midwife because some of you those seasons are coming to an end and like a woman who is ready to give birth to a season of glory God has sent us as prophetic midwives that it is time to push the glory you saw yesterday is nothing compared to that which his majesty will be bringing upon your life and believe me let me speak to someone it will be in your lifetime you will see the birth of that glory that your life will become a testament of the faithfulness and the mercy of God people will look at your life and they will learn God your life will be a handout it will be a lecture manual that if people do not understand anything about God he will refer them to you and say understudy the life of this my servant and you will have clarity as to how I walk the second category of people are those who are about to enter this season I wish I were not the one who would tell you but let me be honest with you in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty if it's advancement that you desire ask Jesus what he faced on his way to Gadara you would think that the storm will spare Jesus it still came this would not be the kind of message I want to preach and I I apologize for the discomfort this will bring to your emotions except that you will thank me soon because many of you you have been eating now you are not eating for nothing don't mind your weight it will shed it off I assure you the, the way the journey will stretch you from border to border you will stretch it through so that when those moments come you will reject the voice of the adversary who comes to lie to you and say, man of God, if you are really anointed, what is wrong with you? Tell him, get thee behind me. I will go through my seasons with honor. I will go through it with nobility and integrity, knowing this, that when he's tried me, I will become refined as gold. That some of you can stand before the dead body of a loved one and with tears in your eyes, you will still believe God has called you to the miracle ministry. When people are asking you and saying, never talk about that vision of crusades again. You could not raise this dead body. Shame on you and your destiny. You can find comfort knowing that his word concerning me remains true. Can we pray for a few minutes? Please rise upon your feet. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. One more time. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Prayer point number one. If you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Lord, grant me an infusion of strength and stamina for the seasons ahead. Please lift your voice and pray. Grant me an infusion of strength. Someone is praying. Following online, please make sure you pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart, the depth of your spirit. Grant me an infusion of strength. Shegete bakasa tabra tege de balakosia, embra kateska di la kaparuska zeneka tebia, reketosha de gaska de berenteska de bariaka tabarusia. Strength for the journey, strength for the journey, strength for the journey, strength for the days that are before me, strength for the days that are before me. The staying power 
the stamina to pass through the seasons that birth glory from within my spirit. In the name of Jesus. Prayer point number two. The prayer now is for the finisher's anointing for those who have been in this season i can tell you there are some of you who have been in this season i know it by my spirit that's why god sent me here there are preachers let me tell you you write this down nigeria is about to experience an emergence there are people we have not seen before they've been quiet going through that cave of adulam some of them are nameless, faceless people just sincerely staying with God. No reputation, but a testimony of going through these seasons. There is an unveiling. You will see them in politics. You will see them in ministry. I'm sharing with you from some of the visions. I've been having phenomenal encounters with the Spirit over the things that God will be doing. I'm not one person who will come out and start telling you things and announcing things, but believe me when I tell you this. The old wine has finished. There is a new wine. There is a new wine that is coming upon the body of Christ. There is a new wine. It's not just coming to church. Strange emergence of people and make no mistake to think they were lucky. These were people who have been hiding like the 5,000 prophets under the custody of Obadiah. For some of us who have been part of many seasons, because we have mastered the art of waiting and crying through these seasons, God will still renew like you renew visa. That even when your visa expires, he will renew your relevance and say continue. And you see, most times when you renew a visa, it won't be the exact timeline. You may start with six months. Then they give you one year or two years. Then they can give you five years or ten years. Some you've exhausted your two years spiritual visa of honor and relevance. And you've proven to God that you've been faithful. There is that spiritual consular that is about to stamp your visa again. And say even though you have been in ministry for a long time, you will still not go out of relevance. You have shown God that through your alignment you qualify for another season. Can I tell you, between now, if Christ tarries, between now and 2030, the, the way things will shift across the body of Christ. I hate to be the one to say this, but there are names that will go down. There are names that will rise up and there are names that will remain. It is my prayer that everybody under the sound of my voice, you will pass through that dealing of the spirit, that circumcision, though painful but that it will bring you to a point where there will be no season of the move of God that you will be out of relevance so can we pray this one last prayer for those who are already at the end of those seasons the grace to push through so that I will bet this new level of glory go ahead and pray revived to revive as this new wave of glory comes upon the body of Christ as this new wave of honor comes upon the body of Christ Lord we thank you for the stamina you have given us to go through these seasons and we realign ourselves afresh that will be recipients of these mighty things you are doing in this new season let our complacency not edge us out of your move let our complacency not edge us out of spiritual relevance as touching the things that you are doing i declare over your life tonight standing upon the grace of the apostle and the angel over this house i decree and declare that the stamina to pass through these seasons until the glory is birthed within you may that grace rest upon you in jesus name and for those who are about to step into this season let there be the strengthening from on high in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus christ Amen. hello 
Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.